Hi friends, welcome back to Wikipedia World. Today we will be begin our discussion about a new chapter which is, which is a continuation of our previous chapter because it is uh, on light, the properties of light and uh, today specifically we will visit spectrum, we will see the concept, revisit the concept of prism, we will further our knowledge into what is known as dispersion and spectrum. We will see how white light is different from a monochromatic or single wavelength light and why is that important in the study of dispersion and spectrum. And finally, we will conclude the lecture by seeing the different components of light of which white light or the sunlight is made up of. So this sounds like an exciting class. Let's start it. In our discussion about uh, deviation, dispersion and spectrum, let us reflect back into what we already know. We have discussed in our previous lecture that when a ray of light travels from one medium to another medium, there is a deviation caused in the path of the light. This phenomena is known as refraction, right? Now, in the case of a glass prism, a triangular prism as I have shown here, when a ray of light enters, this is the incident ray entering at an incident angle, then at the first interface there is a deviation of the ray of light towards the normal because the ray of light is going from the rarer to the denser medium. Then at the second interface, that is the interface AC, the ray of light bends away from the normal. This is the normal, it bends away from the normal. Why so? Because now the ray of light is going from the denser glass medium to the rarer air medium. So this is uh, basically a result of the Schnell's law, which has its foundation in the fact that the uh, speed of light changes as the medium changes. That is, the refractive index of the medium is a function of the speed of light in that medium. So with the changing speed of light in different medium, the refractive index changes. As a result, the light either bends towards the normal or away from the normal. Fine. These are the facts we already knew and we also know for a matter of fact that there are certain factors which influence how much deviation there will be, right? So we see that there is a deviation in the first surface, let's call it delta 1. Then there is a certain deviation in the second interface too, like if the light were going straight, then it would have gone in this direction. But since it has bent, so there is a deviation here. Now, there is an effective deviation if we sum up the deviation at the two faces, that is phase AB and AC, then the whole deviation D can be written as d delta 1 plus delta 2, that is deviation at the individual surfaces. Now, this deviation, capital D, caused due to the triangular prism, can be attributed to several factors. Let us uh, see what those factors are. One is the angle of incidence. So the higher is the angle of incidence here, higher will be the deviation here. So there is a factor of the angle of incidence. Let's write the factors. One is I. I will just mention it as I, angle of incidence. Then we have another factor which is the angle of prism. So this A is the angle of prism. This also influences how much deviation is produced, right? I'll not go into the details because we have already discussed in our previous lecture. And finally, there was something which is the refractive index. The refractive index. The refractive index of the medium with respect to the outer environment. So what is the refractive index here with respect to the first uh, medium? Now the refractive index, higher the refractive index, more will the deviation. That is a known matter of fact. But the point 
I'm trying to make here is that the refractive index in itself is not a not just a material property it is also a property of the wavelength of the light okay so if this ray of light was a monochromatic light then it would have followed a single path after entering the medium and would have gone out as a single ray of light but we know that the uh, white light that is the sunlight is not a single wavelength light it is not a monochromatic light rather it has many wavelengths in it so what will be the effect of that the what will be the effect of the presence of uh, a range of wavelength rather than a single wavelength that is an interesting phenomena that we need to see we will discuss the details in the next slide. The physics behind what happens when a white, when white light, that is sunlight, enters a prism was uh, first studied by Newton. Now, as we discussed in the previous slide, that the wavelength, if it is fixed, then uh, the ray of light enters and exits as a single beam of light but when white light or sunlight enters we know that the sunlight has a broad range of wavelengths and the visible range of wavelength lies from around roughly 4000 angstrom to 8000 angstrom this is a rough estimate 4000 angstrom corresponds to violet light and 8000 angstrom wavelength red light now if you do not know one angstrom is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meter this is just a unit of length but it's a very small unit which is used for measurement of wavelengths of light and uh, things like that so coming back to the topic now what happens is that we see that uh, the sunlight is a range of light a range of wavelengths rather so what Newton observed is that if he incident the white light on a prism what is happening is that the light breaks into different components rather than just a single uh, ray of light entering uh, then refracting again refracting going out there is a range now why is that this is because the wavelength uh, rather the refractive index is a property of wavelength in addition to a material property it is also a property of wavelength of light right so you see that the violet light is a 8, 4000 angstrom whereas red light is 8000 angstrom so obviously the refractive index for violet light will be different from the red light and since the refractive index will be different for different wavelengths what will happen is different wavelength will uh, refract by different angles and as a result of refracting through the two surfaces red light will have a completely different path compared to the blue light or the violet light or the yellow light and as a result at the receiving end we will observe a, a whole spectrum of colors rather than a single white light okay now if you remember the relation between refractive index and wavelength was that a refractive index is kind of inversely proportional to the wavelength okay so since the wavelength of violet light is least so a refractive index of violet is greater than refractive index of red so here the refractive index is maximum and here the refractive index for this wavelength is the minimum now if you think about it the wavelength which has the maximum refractive index 
both to deviate the maximum right because uh, the degree of deviation is a function of the refractive index of the material or uh, the refractive index of the combination of mediums so since the violet light will result in a maximum refractive index of the prism violet light will deviate the maximum as we can see in the spectrum red light being of the maximum wavelength will have minimum refractive index will deviate the least so we get a whole spectrum of colorful rainbow now this spectrum is the most important colors that we see are let me write with a different color let's say red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet so this is the color the opposite side we read it as vibrio uh, for the easiness of remembering so we get the rainbow colors here right so what are the take homes from this discussion one of the very important take home is that white light the sunlight is not a single wavelength light rather it is a whole spectrum of light that is what was proved by newton here then second thing this is a proof that the refractive index of the combination of medium is not just a material property but also a property of the wavelength of the light itself right and we see that this results in a spectrum of colors now let us uh, get into some definition that you can take home from our discussion here one is called dispersion now what is dispersion let me write it down this person so dispersion is basically the splitting of the white light by a prism into its constituent colors so it's splitting of white light into constituent colors when passed through a prism right so this phenomena is dispersion and as a result of dispersion the range of colors the range of this range which we get the band of color seen is called the spectrum so spectrum is the band of colors observed band of colors observed as a result of this portion fine so to sum up uh, what we have seen is that a prism causes deviation deviation uh, result of several factors one of them being the refractive index refractive index is itself a property of wavelength as a result uh, sunlight or white light when passes through a prism breaks into different colors this phenomena is called dispersion and a as a result the spectrum uh, the band of colors which we observe is called the spectrum of colors right now what is the uh, physical reason for this breaking of the band the physical reason is that the speed of light depends on the refractive index right so the different wavelengths will have different speed of light once it enters the prism and as a result due to the variation in the speed of light different wavelengths 
bend through different angles. So basically the foundation of the dispersion is the change in speed of light on entering a different medium by different extent for different wavelengths. Okay? I, you, you did, need not go into very detailed physical explanation. What you basically need to know is that the speed of light is the fundamental reason, the change in speed of light depending on the wavelength is the fundamental reason for the dispersion. Okay, now as we have seen here that the two colors, for the two colors I have mentioned that violet is around 4000 angstrom and red is around 8000 angstrom. Now I would like to give you an idea about the range of the different colors. Okay, so you uh, might not need to learn them by heart, but it's good to have a rough estimate about what range does which color fall into. So let me begin from here. Violet is around, I'll give you rough figures, I will not give you exact figures. So Violet is around 4000 to 4500. Everything is in angstrom. Second is indigo is uh, this 4500 to around 4650. Blue is 4650 angstrom to 5000 angstrom. Then green is 5000 to 5800 angstrom. Yellow is 5800 to roughly 5920 orange is 5920 to 6200 and red is 6200 to roughly 8000 angstrom so these are the rough ranges of different colors of the spectrum formed. Right? Another interesting thing that you might be interested to know, this uh, might be of interest for you, is converting the wavelength. These are the wavelengths, right? These are the wavelengths. So you might be interested to know the frequency wavelength relation. So I will just mention it for the sake of it. The speed of light is equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength. So in other words, the frequency is speed of light upon the wavelength. Speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Okay. So the wavelength you need to take in meters to get the frequency in SI units. And once you do that, what you will see is that the order of frequency for the visible rays of light is 10 to the power of 14 hertz. Okay, so this for visible light is in the order of 10 to the power of 14 hertz. So that's a huge number. I just wanted to give you a uh, initial flavor about the frequency. So with this I will I think I have covered sufficient for you to understand the phenomena of this person and why does the rainbow occur like why does uh, prism breaks it into different colors. I will close today's chapter with this and uh, the next class we will discuss uh, the other ranges of wavelength that we actually do not see, this is the range of wavelength that we can see, our eye can perceive. But there are many more waves, many more different wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum that is not visible to us. We will discuss about them, we will see some of their properties, the wavelengths, where they are used, so things like that. So till our next class, have a great day, goodbye, see you then.